Do you believe Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu should be prosecuted uh, at the ICC, at the International Criminal Court? Should he be arrested for violations of international law, for war crimes, whenever he travels abroad? I think a warrant should have been issued by now. Uh, we had made a submission to the ICC. We've not heard anything for months. There are 192 member nations of the United Nations aside from Israel. Mm -hmm. Why was it South Africa that decided to bring this pretty historic, pretty monumental petition, genocide petition to the International Court of Justice? How did it all come about? Whose idea was it in South Africa to do this? I think it had to be South Africa, really, because uh, <clears throat> the only country uh, that has a similar experience to the Palestinian people and that has been uh, firmly attached to their struggle for freedom and uh, human rights is South Africa. We have a, a long association. I've been explaining while here uh, that our interest and concern about Palestine didn't begin on October 8th. And really given um, our experience of international solidarity and support from almost the entire uh, world community, we felt that that support, that solidarity movement that our leaders really sought uh, and initiated placed an obligation uh, on us where there is uh, patent harm to actually try to do something. So uh, the initiator was the Minister of Justice, uh, but before him I had received many letters uh, from human rights uh, lawyers and activists in South Africa including uh, eminent uh, uh, legal yeah. uh, professionals, all saying there's the convention you know, on genocide. Why don't you do something, South Africa? So on that note, your lawyers at the ICJ in The Hague put out a very detailed case mm -hmm. back in January. Uh, but just for the sake of our viewers watching at home, it's a big charge, the genocide charge. Just briefly, why do you believe Israel is guilty of genocide? It's, of course, a charge Israel denies, its allies, the United mm -hmm. States denies. Why do you believe, briefly, Israel is guilty of genocide? Well, firstly, um, the evidence, in our view, is very clear. Uh, if you look at the uh, Genocide Convention, uh, which was actually crafted post the Second World War, with particular reference to the experience of uh, Jewish people in Europe. And its uh, aspects detail, firstly, that there's a focus on a group with an intent to erase a group, that uh, the measures taken uh, by the aggressor uh, actually seek to ensure that there is no life and that uh, an entire group is eradicated. It's a very specific focus and a range of actions that all speak to leading to death. As you know, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, your counterpart, called your ICJ petition meritless and galling. Uh, the White House National Security Council spokesman, John Kirby, called it meritless, counterproductive, completely without any basis in fact whatsoever. What is your response to the US government when you hear statements like that? Well, firstly, uh, one of the things uh, that I've been intrigued by uh, while being in government and politics is that all of us call for attachment uh, to a range of instruments uh, that are uh, set in place to protect uh, humanity. But the minute those instruments are utilized, uh, if it is against a friend, yeah. uh, then uh, we complain. But when it is uh, utilized uh, and directed at what we regard as an enemy, mm. then we appreciate yeah. uh, the international instrument. This has been uh, one of the uh, reasons for us constantly referring to a double standard approach to uh, uh, international uh, frameworks. Um, so I would say, um, and this has been said to me even uh, by some of my colleagues who are foreign ministers, the very galling, counterproductive, etc. And uh, I've said to them, well, fortunately, what the United Nations system has created is a court with eminent uh, jurists within yeah. it. And it is their decision and judgment. Yeah. Uh, we weren't seeking the judgment of partners, of friends, of commentators. Uh, one colleague told me that uh, she has studied law. I congratulated her on that. However, she's not a judge 
of the International Court of Justice. It's their duty uh, both to scrutinize what we yep. submit, what Israel submits, and make a judgment. And to be clear, the court has said it is plausible uh, that mm -hmm. Israel could be committing genocide. You mentioned America not liking you taking action against its friend. You are here in Washington, D.C. in the U.S. You've been having meetings on Capitol Hill. Are you worried at all about this bipartisan bill introduced in Congress last month, which calls for a full review of U.S. relations with South Africa and questions whether South Africa is engaged in activities that undermine U.S. national security and foreign policy, basically seeks to punish your country for going to the ICJ. But it's a bipartisan bill. Yeah, indeed it is. And uh, it will come, I suspect, before the uh, House. And I've been told by uh, public representatives that it does have a bipartisan support. So I think it would be most unfortunate if it is passed. And so part of my presence here is to affirm uh, the bilateral relationship between South Africa and the United States. I think these are two important democracies in their regions. And uh, it's important that they get on uh, uh, well. Uh, also, um, I believe that uh, to have South Africa as uh, an enemy yeah. or to have a frosty relationship will impact on the relationship with the entire African continent because South Africa is so key uh, on the continent. So I'm really uh, seeking to advise uh, that we be calm and measured in our approach and look at ways in which uh, together we might be a better uh, force for good in the world. I mean, you said last week you issued a call for South Africans to protest the war outside the embassies of the five primary supporters of Israel. Yes, indeed. Which five supporters? Okay, let's go the US, the indeed, UK. The US, UK, uh, Germany has been a very strong Germany. supporter. Uh, That's France. three. France four. And uh, others, uh, the European uh, Union okay. uh, in its collective. So I think... Uh, so you would like to see protests outside the, the EU are, embassy and those four how, embassies? How do, you, how do you get change? Okay. And I wish I could be in Gaza and stand in front of a Palestinian family and be strong enough to protect them. I, that's what I wish I could do. Because I'm pained that I have to watch on TV essentially a murder... Uh, underway, and I am helpless and can do nothing. This was very much the experience we had under apartheid, and it was mass protest, mass struggle, which made a major contribution to indicating to the world that this could, could not go on any longer. So for us to be invisible in a massive human struggle where we know a huge murder is underway, I think that is unacceptable and the world should be horrified. And having large protests with a million is insufficient. There has to be an ongoing campaign to say to the world, this can't be. I have to ask again one more time. You say a huge murder is underway. That's a big charge, genocide, murder. Mm -hmm. You say protest outside the US embassy because they are helping Israel. So is the United States then, according to the logic you're presenting, is the UK, is Germany, are they accomplices to that murder? Well, they're certainly supporting Israel uh, and have said so publicly. Only recently have they said Israel has a right to defend itself, but it must not harm innocent people. Unfortunately, when you have a bomb, uh, it's very difficult for the bomb to decide uh, who's innocent and who's guilty. They have these big dumb bombs that are killing more than just, uh, quote unquote, the terrorists. Um, in terms of stopping the killing, in its initial ruling in January, which you called a major victory, the ICJ agreed that it is plausible that Israel is committing genocide in Gaza, ordered Israel to take immediate and effective measures to increase humanitarian aid and take all measures within its power to prevent genocidal acts, which was undeniably a big deal from the ICJ. Um, it's major, as you say, but the court did not call for a ceasefire mm -hmm. as requested by your petition. So that was a partial defeat for South Africa and a partial win for Israel, was it not? Well, yes, indeed. Uh, it was a disappointment, as I indicated uh, in the media uh, uh, briefing after uh, the court case. But we had anticipated that it would be very difficult for the court to issue that kind of instruction, particularly uh, given uh, the inability of the Security Council uh, to lead on this matter. But I do think uh, the fact of the provisional measures that were agreed to 
uh, was a very important decision uh, in, in uh, global uh, affairs. I also think uh, that had uh, those measures uh, been uh, pursued by Israel, they would require a ceasefire in order to be acted upon. You've also gone back to the ICJ to urge the court to issue emergency orders for Israel to increase humanitarian aid as a famine looms in Gaza. The Israelis have responded to the court. They've called your actions an abuse of the Genocide Convention and even morally repugnant. Uh, do you believe Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war? I think so, indeed, that that is happening. Uh, and it's not thought. We've seen children dying uh, from hunger and starvation. Uh, so. Yes, this is happening, and I'm not surprised. As I've said, uh, insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel. I'm being called all sorts of names. Uh, it's fine. Uh, I can be called the worst name. If we could save the lives of Palestinians, I wouldn't complain. You mentioned earlier about your experience, South Africa's experience, the history with Palestinians. Let's talk about apartheid. You were born in apartheid South Africa. Your late father, Joe Matthews, was a famous anti-apartheid activist. Do you believe that Israel is guilty of the crime of apartheid? Because Israelis often say it's offensive and disrespectful to the South Africans who struggled against apartheid to compare the Palestinians to that struggle. So it'd be interesting to ask a South African government official, what do you think about the apartheid analogy? Well, I, I respond in this way. If I cannot travel on a particular form of transport because of my nationality, um, what, what is that? Uh, I could not travel on particular forms of transport in South Africa because of my nationality. If I cannot own my land and be certain uh, that I have a freehold over it and can retain it in perpetuity uh, for generations, what is that but apartheid? If I have my land broken up into pockets, which are supervised by particular authorities, and I need permits in order to enter uh, into that land. If I'm reserved in terms of movement to move within a particular corridor and have barriers placed that indicate which part of that corridor I can walk in, and as I proceed all along it, I have to produce identity documents. If I can be arrested, detained, without charge, without bail, not knowing why I'm in a prison, uh, what wrong I have done, what else compares to this? I, I, you know, I just can't imagine if I live in ghettos, uh, like townships, and this is where I must live. Do you believe what what's happening in the West Bank and Gaza is worse than apartheid South Africa? I think the onslaught that we're seeing now is certainly much worse. Uh, I think it would have been difficult uh, for the world to countenance uh, that happening uh, in uh, apartheid South Africa. So you made a pretty stark statement last week saying that upon their return, South Africa will arrest dual nationals uh, who have been fighting with the Israeli military in Gaza. There's even been talk from your foreign ministry in the past of stripping them of their citizenship if they're dual nationals. What law would they be violating? And won't your critics inevitably say that you are guilty of anti-Semitism for targeting your country's Jewish minority community, from which these dual nationals, of course, emerge? Well, we have a law on uh, mercenary uh, activity, and it indicates that if you're a citizen of South Africa, you cannot participate in conflict uh, in another country without having approached the authorities in South Africa and provided an indication uh, that you have an intention to assist in a country and given perhaps the likelihood that this is an ally, uh, the authorities may very well grant that you are able to uh, act in that way. But without such a reference to the appropriate authority, you are actually conducting an illegal act. I can't recall the name uh, of the particular act, but we do have such an act. But you're not worried about stripping Jewish South Africans of South African citizenship? Well, I think uh, the prosecutorial authorities know the law and they have the uh, responsibility uh, to execute in this regard. Do you believe Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu should be prosecuted uh, at the ICC, at the International Criminal Court? Should he be arrested for violations of international law, for war crimes, whenever he travels abroad? I think a warrant should have been issued by now. Uh, we had made a submission to the ICC. We've not heard anything for months. 
but you would like to see a, an arrest warrant for Benjamin Netanyahu? I believe that the ICC needs to make a decision as to whether, in terms of war crimes, are they being committed. It's not my decision. The ICC is an appropriate authority. We wrote to it with our observations on what is happening. They must make the decision, Sim same as they did uh, with the Russian president.